What's going on guys, it's Toasty Gaming back with another Warframe guide and today I'm going to be coming at you with 10 tips and tricks to speed up your circuit runs as well as the best Warframes and weapons that you should be picking whenever they pop up for you. I sorted these tips in order from beginner to advanced level so if you're a more experienced player feel free to use the timestamps down below to skip farther into the video. We're going to start off with the simplest tip of all, which is just try to find all three decree fragments on every wave. They have a blue glow and make a noise, so you should be able to find them as long as you have your volume on. Not only will these decrees give you a power up for the remainder of the mission, but they will also give you intrinsics and devere resources that you're going to need later on. Tip number two is to stay in the mission for as long as possible. Your first wave is going to give you 100 circuit progress, but as you continue to stay in the mission, it's going to increase up to a maximum of 170 progress per wave after stage 5. Tip number 3 is another simple one, but I'm embarrassed to admit this actually took me a little while to figure out. Inside Teshin's cave, there's an automatic gardening system that grows 6 random plants of Duviri, and these plants refresh every 20 hours. This is an easy way to just to get some free resources so you can install those Incarnon adapters that you're farming. Tip number four is going to be to try to focus on defensive frames. You're going to get a ton of damage due to decrease, whether it's weapon damage, melee damage, or even just power strength. So what you're going to want to focus on is a frame that's durable enough to get you into those high level longer runs. For example, this is a pretty great role for me. I have several tanky frames that will be able to take me as far as I want to go. Tip number five is that ammo is very scarce within the circuit. And because you can't bring carrier or drop ammo pads, this means you're going to want to avoid explosive weapons like the Kuva Ogris or a lot of the spray and pray weapons in the game. Just because you're just going to burn yourself out of all your ammo within the first couple waves. The best weapons to go for are charge weapons like the Bubonico or the Foeman, as well as infinite ammo weapons like the Nadaruk and the Grimoire. The best thing you can bring is an Incarnon weapon if you already have one, because the Incarnon mode gets its own charge ammo pool, so you're pretty much never going to run out. Tip number six is another simple one, but I still see people dying to the assassination boss even in Steel Path, so I figured I'd show you guys how to survive that boss fight. All you have to do when you start spinning is just jump into your operator and go into void mode, and you'll be completely invulnerable, and then all you have to do is just wait out the phase. Something you can also do if you're on a frame like Titania or Zephyr is just go and float above the boss. Once you've done a little bit of farming on either Duviri or the circuit and have earned yourself a few intrinsics, you want to come here to the right side of the cave and spend them on the Opportunity skill tree. This gives you bonus warframes and weapons to choose from when you're starting the mission, which is going to be very helpful it's going to vastly increase your chances of getting a good loadout that you want. If the game gives you a loadout that you don't like for whatever reason, you don't have to wait out the full two hours in order to refresh it and get a new one. What you can do is just go do a singular round on the circuit and then extract, or go ahead and do a run on the Lone Story or the Viri Experience. This is going to take a lot longer, but you're going to need those resources eventually anyway. And once you complete one of these, it'll refresh your loadout and you'll be able to try again to get something better. There's nothing worse than finally getting that god roll loadout and having all your teammates extract after the first two waves. So what I suggest you guys do is go into the recruiting channel and try to find some other players that want to do a long run. You can say something simple like hosting or looking for a steel path circuit 30 minutes or an hour plus. You won't always be able to find a squad depending on the time of day and your region, but if you can find three other players that want to go for a long run, this is definitely the fastest way to level up your circuit progress. Another tip for you guys is you can click the little uh, magnifying glass there and type circuit in here and add it to your filters. That way you'll only see people talking about the circuit in the recruiting chat. Alright guys, my final tip is that when you're using frames with exalted weapons, be very careful what loadouts you're using. The reason is when you're in the circuit, you don't actually get to choose your weapon build for your exalted weapons. What happens is, it copies the number of the loadout you're using in here. So if I'm using my first loadout here, my loot build, 
then when I'm running my Dex Pixia, it will run the first thing I have in here. So it'll run this build right here. But if when I go into the circuit, I select my loadout number three, my endurance loadout, it will actually select my loadout number three from my pistols as well. And it would leave me with this unmodded loadout. So this is just something to be careful of. I noticed this definitely works for Titania. I haven't tried every frame in the game, but from all the ones I've tested, this seems to be the case. So just make sure whatever exalted build you want to use, just pull it over into the first slot, is what I usually do. Pull it all the way to the left, and then take whatever Warframe build I want to use and pull this all the way to the left. They're both in the first slot, and then you know what you're going to be getting. Now, I'm going to show you guys the best frames that you should be picking in the circuit. If you don't have them yet, or don't have the exact mods I do, don't worry because these frames are so strong, you can just run them with the default loadout that the circuit gives you and you're going to be just fine. In my opinion, the best possible frame in the circuit is Titania. Her 4 makes you so survivable and makes it so easy to pick up all the intrinsics as well as to do the void floods, which tends to be the most annoying mission in my opinion. Not only that, but her dex pixie is scales so great with the decrees at the beginning. The standard build I run is just focused on power strength as well as a little bit of efficiency and duration. Uh, you can switch it up, like put pistol lamp in the Aurea. I just don't have it. But you're gonna really want energize and velocity tends to be really nice on Titania, as well as energized munitions, so you can just hold down that trigger button. For a Dex Pixia, I highly suggest you guys go for a viral slash build because this will scale the best against high level enemies. But not only that, you can get corrosive damage, fire, cold, and toxin all off the decrees that you'll be getting anyway, which makes them a lot less valuable to mod onto the weapon, in my opinion. Zephyr is another amazing frame to have in the circuit for a very similar reason to Titania. Her tailwind and her turbulence allows her to just float above the whole battle and be pretty much immortal, while also having a lot of mobility to try to find decrees. Not only that, but her airburst and her tornado is amazing crowd control, and it helps you defend the excavator or the defense points if you have to. Zephyr is one of the easiest frames to mod, and you can really just go with her default loadout, and you're barely going to even notice the difference. But if you do have her, this is what I'm running here. So Energy Nexus is really nice just to get that regen, with a little bit of a range, efficiency, nothing too crazy. Something you should look out for is if you ha see you have a weapon that has that you own already, you should try to mod electric or gas damage on it. I don't have the time to explain the whole thing. Another YouTuber explained it, but just trust me. Put electric damage or gas damage on a weapon, shoot into your tornado, and watch all the enemies die. That's all you need to know. Wisp is another amazing frame that you can't go wrong with picking in the circuit. Her reservoirs heal the excavator and the defense point, as well as adding a ton of survivability and damage to your teammates and you. Her breach surge goes through Eximus units, so you can get right through all the overguarded units as you're getting later into the run. And I also put Nourish on here, just in case you guys don't know, this actually stacks with your breach surge because this counts as a weapon multiplier. So you're just going to be doing like millions of damage with your breach surge, as well as regenerating tons of energy and buffing your teammates. My build I'm running, this is probably the most expensive build out of all of my circuit frames. Um, you don't have to run this exact build, but if you have this, this is amazing. Archon Stretch gives her pretty much infinite energy when you have Nourish on, because you're going to be constantly ticking with your modes, electric damage. And I just put a, basically a ton of strength and a little bit of range. Guys, please keep range on your Wisp. By the way, I see a lot of people running negative range Wisp for some reason. I've been seeing this a ton recently. Guys, Breach Surge is literally OP. There's no reason you should be running negative range on Wisp, like ever, I don't think. The last frame I'm going to recommend for today is Mesa. Her shooting gallery and shatter shield, along with an adaptation mod, just adds a ton of survivability. And her Peacemaker allows her to cut right through those overguarded units that you're going to be running into a ton of. These, along with two Archon Shards, adding plus two stacks of Corrosion, allows you to fully strip the enemies and just cut right through them no matter how high level they are. I don't have a fully kitted out Mesa build. If you really want to invest into her, I suggest you guys check out Brozyme's video. But for the more intermediate players, this is probably going to be enough for you guys. These are the peacemakers I'm running. Just remember, like I said, guys, you have to make sure you're copying the config from your Warframe. That's the one that's going to choose for the regulators. 
All right, guys, that was everything I could think of to teach you about the circuit in Warframe. If you enjoyed the video or you learned something new, please drop a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.